dearest members of the Commission for Women, including Ms. Lucia Williams, who I know not only from the Commission, but from my years as majoring in Hispanic Studies, who called me to notify me of this great award, and Chair of the Susan B. Anthony Award Selection Committee, Timothy McKenna, and the person who nominated me for this prestigious award, Dr. Suzanne Bergeron, thank you. There is no greater honor for me than to receive the Susan B. Anthony Community Award. Words cannot even begin to express my gratitude and forgive me please for not being present. I've attended a number of Susan B. Anthony Awards while a student here. I can't believe I'm missing my own. One that I dreamed of achieving but never imagined how I would do it while a returning older student at U of M Dearborn. It is no small event that's keeping me from you. In fact, because of my participation in the bipartisan prayer breakfast as a legislator in Lansing, I was asked to accompany other like-minded legislators for a trip of a lifetime to Turkey to explore the three major religions, the culture, schools, hospitals. It's a working trip and I did pay for my way. I'm just disclosing that here. Thank you, Dr. Claude Jacobs, who instilled in me a desire to learn about world religions and study other cultures. I'm fulfilling that mission as well. It is because of my education at the University of Michigan Dearborn that I am now a state legislator. I say it often and proudly. It's thanks to you, Chancellor Little, who provided me with a stellar university from which I learned all I needed to know to succeed as a woman in the state legislature. And I didn't learn it from a political science class. I learned all of it from my women's studies curriculum and minor. I most especially thank you, Dr. Suzanne Bergeron, for nominating me. You were my hero in women's studies. After Dr. Pamela Pennock, one of my American history professors nominated me for the new org organization called WILL, Women in Learning and Leadership. I hesitantly attended an interview with Dr. Bergeron because my husband said that I had to since a professor nominated me. And feminism is a good thing, he said, being a card-carrying member of NOW while he attended University of Michigan in the 80s. I do owe my political career to my husband, who's also a U University of Michigan Dearborn alumna, Mark Liss. Dr. Suzanne Bergeron accepted me into Will's program and thus I learned the title of founding member. At this point, I still had no clue as to how I would contribute to women's studies and feminism. After all, I was an ER nurse, a profession filled by women mostly, who was returning to get a bachelor's. What could I do for the feminist movement? And for your information, I despise politics. I thank wholeheartedly the following people who provided letters in my behalf. Dr. Suzanne Bergeron, my mentor, the person who saw in me what I had no clue existed, who accepted me into will and was my professor, along with Dr. Maureen Linker, in the very first class I mentored at Scott's Correctional Facility for Women under the direction of Dr. Laura Lempert, another dynamic professor who works tirelessly to help those most underserved in society and who encouraged me, or better said, persuaded me to speak about the mentoring experience and to learn about corrections. Chancellor Little, Little, thank you for supporting the women's studies programs and curriculums. Thank you for having the courage to do so. Vice Chancellor Ed Begale, thank you for recognizing the importance of the Bipartisan Freshman Caucus and for working so hard on behalf of University of Michigan Dearborn in Lansing. Suzette McGraw, Will member and member of the Students Veterans Organization, whom I see often in Lansing in the Military Committee. I'll see you at the Capitol on May 5th with the other Will women. Marie Wilson, founder and leader of the White House Project, who provides the tools necessary for women to run for office and win. And her mantra, add women, change everything. Senator Rebecca Warren, who provided information about my involvement in the Michigan Go Run White House Project and Michigan Cabinet involvement, a group that donates funds so that all women have the opportunity to run and win, regardless of their social economic status. And now my chance to thank the professor who encouraged me to do more, who saw the change from the very first class that I took on campus, American history. It was her first time on campus as well. I later took women's history with her, and finally women in leadership and social change. Do you realize that you held the key to my success? You made me want to succeed. Your class inspired me to change all sorts of changes, gender, social movements. Oh my. The very last class that I saved from my final class, because I knew it would be a difficult one, was yours, Dr. Hickey. It made me think, it made me act. Kudos to you, Professor. You succeeded, and so did I. You taught me about the labor women, about the women who strike for peace, and about Ella Baker. 
Guess whose leadership style I chose to follow? Ella Baker, the one who worked in the background and let others aspire to become the major leaders. It's much more fun that way. I get away with a lot being co-chair of the Bipartisan Caucus. I don't need the glory of a leadership title. I just want the job done. Dr. Hickey, your class on social change in action made me want to prove to you that I could do it, that I was serious. I had no clue how I was going to make you proud and all the other professors proud, but soon thereafter came my opportunity to run for state representative. I accepted the challenge, gave it all my effort, and succeeded. And in a short while after that came an opportunity, my dream really, to participate in a movement, the No Labels Movement, started by Nancy Jacobson from the White House Project in New York. I am also a founding member of that movement. I participated in the December 13th inauguration of the No Labels Movement at Columbia University in New York. It says not left, not right, but forward. Look for this movement to change the 2012 primary elections. Please check it out and become active participants. I cannot stand partisanship when we are all suffering. It's time to work together. For lack of time, I want to say thank you to all of you. Dr. Luthra, I did not forget about you and what your class has contributed to my knowledge of gender in the media and what I need to fight for. Thank you, Roma Haney, Susan Kushner, Vera Michael, women who work so hard to better the lives of other women. And last but not least, my dear friend and Will's sister, Laura Freeman, a fellow student with whom I presented with at the National Women's Studies conferences we attended, who helped me succeed in my endeavors as state rep. God bless you, Laura. Thank you all for this most prestigious award. I am humbled and so honored to receive it. I have so much more work to do, and I'm blessed to be in a position to do so. Last but not least, thank you, Susan B. Anthony, for being our role model.